Hello guys, um, so today I'm going to be recreating one of my popular tutorials which was based around DMM smashing a bit of glass. Um, I know a lot of people have gotten in contact with me about DMM not being um, something that they use uh, because they've got to purchase a license to get sort of a, a high poly count in the simulation etc. So I'm going to redo this um, tutorial with NCLOF. Um, and show you a simple way around it and uh, perhaps you could use this in the future. Um, so I've created a um, piece of geometry which um, looks like uh, just before glass has smashed. Um, I should say that there will be a link down in the description where you can purchase this if you want. Uh, it's only like five dollars or whatever, two quid, one pound fifty, whatever it is, it's not a lot. Um, so you can follow along with the tutorial and when the uh, tutorial is finished I'm also going to upload to the same place ready for purchase the entire scene so you could either bypass following along and just have the scene ready made for you um, but yeah I'm going to start selling a few of these scenes and the products and stuff like that you may or may not want to purchase them whatever but it just helps me carry on doing it and in some ways gives me a bit of incentive as well as wanting to just be a good person okay so we've got the geometry here and the first thing we can do is go into the top view I'm just going to right click and go to face um, and I am going to delete half of this so that for now we're just dealing with sort of a 2D plane as it were um, let's get the rendering editor ho open and I'm going to add a new surface to it. Let's just do a land, but for now. And quickly, I'm going to do my UVs on this object because we don't want to be doing it after the simulation. That is a pain. Um, so we've got some UVs on this now. If we just have a quick look in at the UV texture editor, um, we can see we've got the UVs. So we need that. You don't want to do that whilst you're doing the simulation because it won't pick up on the static UVs. That your UVs will um, become dynamic with the mesh, and therefore your texture won't stay where it's supposed to stay. Alrighty, so we've got our um, piece of glass. Let's just increase the timeline. Um, what's the first thing I'm going to do here? Let's get the um, smasher going. Not a great word for it, smash up, but you know what I mean. Um, so we're going to go Shift W to key the translation only. I'm going to move to frame 40 and drag it through and Shift W again to key the translation. And you can see that there's only keyed the translation there. So that's all good in the hood. So we're just going to go now into the End Dynamics menu, End Mesh. I'm just going to tear that strip off. I'm going to make this. Passive Collider because it's not going to have any dynamic forces on it, but it will interact with NCLOF objects. I'm going to select this and I'm going to hit create NCLOF. So we've now got an NCLOF object. And if I just press play, it should just drop and they all miss each other. And you get some really cool looking thing going on. Not what we want right now. Hang on, I've missed a step. Let's just go back a couple of steps. Uh, before I create the NCLOF object, I want to, uh, we could do this after, but I just want to right click and go to vertices. I'm going to get my marquee tool out, or you can use your paint tool, whatever you want. And I'm just going to grab some vertices in a fairly chunky way. Um, these are going to kind of be where the glass is going to break. This is just going to save us some hassle later on. If you want to add to your selection, just press Ctrl and Shift. Um, all right, cool. I'm gonna hit W. Go back to my move tool. Go back to the polygon menu. Just go to edit mesh, detach components. All right, so those CVs are now detached from each other. So these CVs out here are still part of one another, and the CVs in here, if we go in, we can see are detached. All right, sorry about that, but we rectified it quickly. So now we're going to create Encloth. Um, we can just hit play again, see if it's all working. Good. 
Um, and obviously, because I hit Control Z a couple of times, we just undid that passive collider, so that is now a passive collider. Once more. Cool. Let me get a smash. Woohoo! Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to stop this um, uh, object from dropping. So we're just going to right click and go to Vertex. You wouldn't have seen that menu on my screen capture software, which I'm going to have to update soon. But basically, right click and just go to Vertex on your left hand side menu and select one, two, three, four vertices. And we're going to go into the end dynamics menu again. I'm going to go to end constraint. I'm going to click on transform constraints. So basically it's going to make some constraints in every corner which will stop those corners from being affected by any kind of physics in the scene. But it's going to bend like that. Not really what we want. Um, I've never seen any kind of garment uh, be destroyed like that on a washing line. But yeah, might be a thing. So the next step is kind of cool, and because we've done a UVs, this is really important. Um, let's get the attribute editor open, and let's get the uh, rendering hypershade open. Okay, so we've got our um, Lambert, and with that Lambert, in the color section, I'm just going to create a ramp, um, and I'm going to delete that part of the ramp. <clears throat> Yep, drag this one down. Make that one black. Make that one white. Turn it to a circular ramp. Tighten it up a bit. And if we hit six on the keyboard, we should be able to see that on here. Interactively doing its thing. So yeah, I guess you've guessed what we're going to be doing here. And that is we're going to be using this ramp um, for our area of destruction and obviously we can soften that off uh, where we want to try and influence some more jaggedy bits so let's just bring it down a bit okay so if you hit play now obviously nothing's going to happen because all we've done is change the texture um, so we need to tell Encloth to use this ramp um, for its input attract so we've the shade is selected, if we graph the network, we can see that the ramp is here. So if we select the Encloth object and scroll down inside your Encloth attributes under Dynamic Property Maps, you'll find there's a whole load of complicated looking goof. Um, but we are looking for the one that says Input Attract Map. Okay, So we're going to middle mouse drag um, our texture onto that word and we're going to let go. All right. So if we press play now, not a lot's going to happen. So it's all pretty much doing the same thing. So the reason for that is, is there's an extra attribute up here which controls the amount of the input mesh attract. Okay? So if we take that right up here and press play now, we can see that it's falling away within that circular area and not around here. And the reason that it's starting already is because our uh, simulation is running from frame one and we don't need to do that. So if we just press play for a second, stop it around now. Ooh, that's close. I don't like it. I'm going to go back one frame. So we're on frame 17. So if we get the outliner open again, we go to the nucleus, which is what's controlling everything in the scene, kind of the brain behind it all, and within the nucleus attributes, we'll go to time attributes, and on start frame, we'll just put in the number that is showing there, which is the current frame, number 17, that's frame 17. So that means that our um, simulation is not going to start running uh, until that point, which is good because we don't want it falling down before and so now for press play nothing happens until a point pretty much of impact so that's all good so obviously um, let's just play that now what we want to do is we don't want to see it on our shader anymore um, which is fine we don't need to because we've got it plugged in to the input attract anyway so we can just select this little arrow there and delete it 
or right click up here and go break connection whatever you like so if I press play now boom we're starting to get some kind of glass like explosion we keep it going so that's all going off into the world and going crazy we can add some mass to this if we want which is gonna help the weight of our uh, little experiment here the things are gonna fall down a bit quick as you can see it's all falling down here and going bonkers what we have got is a lot of them are still kind of attaching to each other and that's because of the softness of the ramp that we've been dealing with so if we go and have a look at the ramp again we can tighten that up so we can still make this circle bigger but we can tighten it up so there's less of a fall off around the edges so we're more of a clean break really there we go these little lot just fall down there obviously we can make this much bigger sort of up here so you get more of an explosion and everything kind of you know if you'd made your sphere bigger as well these bits would be coming out and because I only keyframed the translation we can scale it up and it will do its thing uh, so also because we um, only separated all those vertices in the beginning these lot aren't going to even do the cracky breaky thing because um, we didn't detach the components so that's quite nice but if you did want the entire thing to um, to to be you know detached like this, then you would have to detach all of those verses accordingly. Okay, so let's just bring this down a little bit more. Let's just go into a ramp and make it sort of a little bit more normal. I'm going to show you something fairly cool in a second. Um, let's get a floor in, shall we? Yeah, and we'll make that a passive collider. So stuff can fall on the floor. Oh, we're a little bit too high because it's playing around with that down there. That's cool. But just quickly, let's make it look sort of window-ish. Yeah, window-ish sort of look. Um, yep. Ah, uh, yeah, we got an amazing window here. Right. So all these bits are bouncing around on the surface, but it's still very flat. Um, so what we can do is at this point we can actually still extrude this object um, so if we just go into the polygons menu we're going to go to edit mesh extrude let it think for a second and we'll just grab it pull it back a little bit not too much and then we'll right click go back to object mode um, what it will do is it's just going to slow the scene down a little bit because now we're dealing with extruded surfaces but you know it's still a bit quicker than DMM and less hassle really and cost less so it's doing its thing Remember at frame 17, that is when the simulation starts. You sort of talk amongst yourselves for a minute. <laughs> I haven't got anything to say. Right, here we go. So it should start coming through now. Obviously, if you cast your scene, uh, or play blast it, you can watch it as many times as you want. So now we can see we've got some extruded, less flat looking objects which are now exploding through. 
Bam. Let's just stop that for a second. So there we go. Uh, that's all good. So this is probably the scene I'm going to upload. If you guys want to grab it. What I'm just going to quickly do now is just go back a couple of steps from before extruding this just to speed up the um, next section. I just want to get rid of that extrude. Alright, cool, that's gone. So, interesting thing about this, we've got the ramp plugged in but it doesn't have to be a ramp um, we can create um, any kind of um, shape that we want but it doesn't just have to be a shape of course so if I go and grab a file texture that I created a little while ago um, let's have a look in here there we go. So, just basically in Photoshop, because this input attract is looking at black and white to give you um, areas that are going to be uh, simulated, I just created a black and white word that says smash. And so, I'm going to go to the input attract area. And I'll break the connections to that, and I'm going to middle mouse drag that in there. So, we can see we've got a word smash now working what this will do well let's just show you because it's not perfect but it kind of is at the same time but we'll see all right so basically if you had a much more dense mesh you'd be able to see that word kind of perfectly <clears throat> but this would work if you had maybe a 3d logo that you wanted to smash through uh, or something like that i don't know but it's just showing you you can use um, your own type of maps uh, to create that smash effect. So it could be a smiley face or whatever. Obviously, <coughs> it could be animated as well. You could even animate the ramp so that it grows over time to sort of um, so more chunks start to fall off. Um, but yeah, that's about it really. And if you we can extrude it as I said afterwards. And if you want to render it, we can just stick on our usual favorite glass materials um, and render it. So, yeah, that's the other way around, doing it in DMM. Hope that helped, guys. Um, check out the description if you want to grab one of those uh, products. I'm going to start doing that on all of my tutorials now because um, various people have been getting in touch with me not knowing this, not knowing that and it's a lot easier for me to send over the scenes but obviously some of these scenes take me time and brain power to create so why shouldn't you bloody well purchase them hey, hey. alright guys, take it easy um, be good to one another and I'll see you in the next one thanks a lot, bye bye